All right, this is part two to a part one video that you'll see on the playlist is over an hour long, and who the hell has time for that? I know nobody, and that's fine, I understand. Uh, I just put it up there anyway because I just didn't want to lose it. I didn't want to lose this. I didn't want to lose what it felt like to put myself in this completely stupid situation that could have been life-threatening, actually, if I was out of water, if I had been bitten by something, if I had an injury or an infection. Believe me, I was thinking about that stuff all that night. Um, in sh sorry, the sh what's the shortest version? The shortest version is that I didn't realize what I was doing when I, I wound up in this situation and I didn't even know I was doing it until it was too late, until I was stuck, like physically stuck. The, uh, the mud had packed in between the wheels and the fenders on the bicycle, so now the wheels wouldn't turn. And also, there was no traction. I could barely even like just walk around with my muddy clown shoes uh, because I couldn't even get up a hill. I would slide back down again. The, the friction coefficient was so low. And so, these two assumptions I had always made, well, my three assumptions I had always made, that no matter what, I could always start walking, Number two, that you can pedal a bike and it'll get traction and push forward. And three, that a bicycle moves by its wheels turning and rolling. All three of those were violated. All three of those were broken in one night for the first time in my life. And then it, got dark, it kept raining and then it got dark. And I'm, I'm standing here in this mudtopia out here just thinking, what in the, Craig, what did you just do? I just did this. I didn't even know to be properly freaked out by it until the next day when I had actually gotten into town, into Shanghai, and, you know, checked into a very nice little $11 a day guest house and got clean and all that kind of stuff. I just, uh, before I really appreciated, holy crap, that was me. That was me that did that. Yeah, a life changer in, in some respect. Anything else I want to say? And so I ended up spending that night in the tent, as you'll see, just with my mind racing. I'm like, okay, how do I not die tomorrow? How much water do I have? How many uh, pairs of dry socks do I have so that I can walk without getting blisters? Blisters in this mud. You see what I'm saying? You see? Like it, uh, it just... I had never had to think that way before. I mean, I'm, I'm an engineer, right? So I'm paid to worry. Worrying is my job. But it had never been about my immediate flesh and blood situation. I'd never been there before. Many people in this world do a lot. I know. Yeah, I got a little bit more respect for those people. That's for damn sure. But this was my, my intimate introduction to that, that tier of living. Yeah, so anyway, enough. Uh, let's just pick it up and see what happens next. Well, that didn't go the way I planned. Oh, funny, funny. So this is some vision quest type stuff now. Not that I planned on it, not that I expected it, but... Um, the squiggle route along this section of the river, it's not, it's not flat and populated with all kinds of little farms and buildings. No, 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 no. No. It is up and down and up and down in mud and rocks and up and down in mud and rocks and occasional little farmhouses. But that's all. And uh, and then it started to get dark, and then it started to drizzle a little bit, as I presume you can hear now. And then the mud got so bad that the wheels stopped turning. The uh, mud caked and, and packed itself between the fenders and the tires. And, and so... They got to where the they wouldn't even turn. The wheels wouldn't even turn. So, uh, and, and like in, 
I mean, it's comedy. It's comedy. It's hubris comedy. And then this this path road thing uh, got really, really steep. And then it came straight down, then really, really steep. And I can't even, I mean, I, I have to push the bike downhill. It's plowing. It's sliding. Getting it uphill, I have to, like, I'm dragging. I'm dragging this 125-pound total object. It, um... And I am feeling sorry for myself. So, it got so bad, it got so bad, it got so bad. It kept drizzling so the mouth got worse. And it, I could fish in there with my fingers and it, it wouldn't help. There's already, it's already backed up in there. Okay, so, tent practice. Here we are, tent practice, very good. Uh, I found a kind of a flat spot. Um, I didn't get the, out the mattress or whatever because screw it, man. So, um, the bike is, I dragged it over to a tree so it's not in the main path. It's blatantly visible with all its reflecto stuff. But I dragged in the real goodies, you know, the things with my passport and the computer and everything and, and the tools. And I went back for the clean clothes and underwear. I might need those. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I got three bottles of water. Okay, they're all dirty, so I got to figure out how to get the caps off and all that. But I'm in the tent, rain flies up. I'm really glad I got that one practice run over at Homeboy's place. And there's a resort five miles away. Five little miles. So let's see what happens. Um, I'm going to sleep or wait or whatever until the sun comes out, and then I got to figure out what I can do. Cell phone doesn't work here. So I might uh, just try to walk, just walk, 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 walk to the resort and hope someone has a pickup truck to come back for the bike. That'd be really good. That'd be good. Um, or I go to the bike and then I I got the tools and take off the fenders. That might be sufficient. Let's find out. So I, yeah, I'm not... I just gotta wait till the sun comes up and then I can think some more, maybe do some more. I just wanted to catch this. I wanted to capture this moment. At least for me. It's, um, it's a great, it's a great feeling of feeling like such a fool. But also, I didn't understand how bad it was going to get. I just didn't get it. I just didn't get it. I get it now, and it's uh, it's affecting me in the old noodle, and that's good. So, Shanghai is maybe 15 miles away. Anyway, blah 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 blah. We'll we'll do more thinking tomorrow. Okay. Oh yeah, right. Headlamp. Didn't see, didn't see why I would really need it, but I found a campy, campy store. Was that in Bangkok, I guess? And there they were, and it was like 30 bucks. I'm like, oh man. But I'm so glad that I bought it. So the headlamp, that's a real thing, guys. You need that headlamp. All right, okay. And good morning. Six or 6.30. Rain has stopped and the sun is out. And here's where I've been all this time. There's the corn. And there's the terraced rice down there. How about that? The, the bike was stashed back there. It's not there now. That's fine. Here... It's my first ever campsite. <laughs> Real campsite, right? Mr. Tent, Mr. Rainfly is already drying. <laughs> ah, not a chance. Anyway, and then over here, more of that terraced rice. 
How about that? It's like I thought I was alone out here in the in the jungle, but really this is very intensively cultivated by people. Look at those clouds rising up off the hills there. Amazing. So glad the cell phone still works. Took it out of the case and I'm running commando here. It got wet inside. Okay. And there's Mr. Bike. That's a can of some sort of chemical. Look at that. How about that? It's still muddy, buddy. It is still muddy for sure. But I figured out to use this first to scrape the mud off the bottom of my shoes, which was immediately replaced by more mud. And then to get in there and uh, 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 get out from between Mr. Fender and Mr. Wheel. I mean, it's still, it's still filthy, but it uh, did work. Let me pause and take a picture. Oh yeah, by the way, look at how well my gates belt worked, huh? You see that? If that were a chain, it would have broken a couple times over and I would be in a even more trouble, even more trouble because with a, with a roll off speed hub, there's no slack, you know, there's no uh, Mr. Derail there flipping and flopping there. So you can't take links out and still kind of function. Oh no, I would have to replace busted links with spare links. I would have had them with me. I'd actually do own them, but they're back home because I don't need them anymore. But anyway, the point is, the, uh, the mud clearing nature of uh, the Gates carbon drive belt is for real. And I've experienced it myself. Plug, plug. Right, so zooming in on the answer box last night, boom, a, uh, a couple guest houses appeared half a mile away half a mile away in different directions but basically this is a big squiggle of blah 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 blah, blah. but uh, I was hearing through the night uh, maybe you can hear it now motorbikes right motorbikes and even some trucks but they weren't passing by here crucially so what that means is there's some sort of more busier serious road over there or at least more used which suggests uh, a better road surface, or at least uh, the availability of hoses to clean that sucker off. So now I'm going to, as methodically as I can, because I have no other choice, I'm gonna pack up the loot, put it all back on the bike, and proceed to huff and puff and huff and puff and walk and push and clean and scrape until I get up to that road. Okay. Okay. Up and down, up and down, up and down mud. Town. 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 I'm gonna make it. Okay, hallelujah. These nice folks over here. Hi. I've uh, sold me a bunch of sponsors and some water and letting me use their hose. Holy crap. This is good. This is very, very good. So here's the before picture for you guys to enjoy. And also, further on, the people are gesturing to me that the road to Chiang Rai from here is mud on top. Of pavement, which sounds good to me. All right.
see ya. Well, I'm filthy because of all the splashback, but the shifter shifts, the wheels turn. Oh, shit. Great, you idiot. Okay, I'm filthy because all the splashback, but the wheels turn now, and the shifter shifts, and the, the crank goes around nicely, and they've been gesturing to me that it's mud on pavement. From here on out, let's do it. You know where I am. Oh, hello there. Mr. Froggy. Man, look at that. God, those scenic, those scenic hills. And how you like this. Oh, oh, the gourmet stuff. It's up and down, but it's smooth. You can coast down the, oh. Oh God, yes. So, it's like, I don't know, 20 kilometers further to go. 20 kilometers of this, you're on. And it's only a noon, right about noon now. Okay, um, I just had my two ice creams and my, and my one uh, Americano for $3 total. At this nice little place. Very fully apportioned Hong Nam, which is Thai for bathroom down there. Very, very nice. I hit reset on all of those things. I dumped out the two water bottles that had kind of suspect water that I bought from those very nice old folks at the country store back there. So it's going to work. It's going to work. Roll off works, shifting works, pedaling works, 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 works. The seat is kind of stretched out right here. I had it double bagged when I left it, but me, I, I don't know, I don't know. I'll be uh, hitting it with the, the special rubby stuff when I get this thing indoors. So the, the big master plan now, uh, I, I got the answer box working again, so I could Google search for uh, 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 coin-op laundries, yes. So I know where those are now. So I know where to go and where to start looking for places to stay. Great, because I'm not gonna try to ask those people if they have a, if they have a washing machine. They might say yes, but because they wanna say yes, they don't wanna say no, and I don't wanna, I'm, I'm cranky enough as it is. I don't wanna be suspecting people of bullshitting me and stuff, or at least not have a reason to. So anyway, great. Uh, fortunately, Chiang Rai is the, is the Thailand of Thailand. It is the uh, friendliest and cheapest city in the whole, big city in the whole country. And so it's gonna be really hard to screw this up. Okay. I'll see you there. All right. Orchid guest house. Hello, hello. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Perfect. No rain here. Camping stuff is still on there. Ugh. But uh, the game begins. The game begins. This here, this is Dirtyville. That's Dirtyville over there too. And then everywhere else is Clean Town. Yes. And then over here is the bathroom. I don't have any buckets yet, but here's my hot water, high pressure blaster shower. Very nice. Here is a curtain rod, curtain rod, towel rack rod thing that I could hang things on and squirt at with said hot water over there. So that's really good. That's really good. Uh, 11 bucks a day. No problem. Okay, okay. I'm not sure the AC works. The place next door, I may have to hop over to there. Oh, oh yeah, and the <laughs> Mr. MacBook still works as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's the first thing I checked. The, uh, the place next door has these bitchin' drying racks, like a whole garage full of these uh, roll-around drying racks which means uh, that I can dry tents and whatever the hell I want uh, covered like. 
Yes, Craig has a face. Right, so, um, yeah, so I want to switch over to there when I can, anyway, to get access at that huge drying infrastructure. I don't, there are plenty of machine washing laundromats around here, but, um, I'll take the first pass at all the clothes with those. I don't want to machine dry though, because I don't want to set the dirt that doesn't come out. So I'll do the first run there. I'll get onto the, the computer there and learn how to care and feed uh, for my tent fabrics and see if I can machine wash those, see if that works or if I have to do it in there like I just said. And now I got my clean shirt, got my clean shorts, my filthy socks and sandals, got my wallet in the answer box. I'm going to go back down the street and see if I can find the retired couple, the Australians, I think, who pointed me to this place, which is going to do everything I need to do and thank them. Okay. Yeah, I was just, I knew I was in the strip, you know, the, the tourist accommodation strip. I saw a meeting outside of that cafe. I said, ladies and gentlemen, and that was that. Love it. Okay. Till then. And sure enough, it worked out great. I had my towel rack here to hang things on. Get the business with this, standing here in my underwear, going to work, right? That's where a lot of it went. Okay. And then, do, 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 do. There's Mr. Ground Cloth, which is actually the cleanest thing in the retinue. And here's Mr. Agnes. Dun, 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 dun. And da, 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 da. Getting dried. And oh, look at those beautiful, like new sandals. I swear, where can I get something like that? And I gotta clean the floor here. As far as these go, I think this is some next level stuff. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do about Le Panier. And Mr. At. Now, Mr. At can just go. I need a bucket. I think I need buckets. So, I'm gonna mine these guys out here until uh, the rain starts, until it looks like it's about to rain, then I gotta bring them in and I'll put them on the beds or something. And then we go to the store, get some buckets and stuff, and we go to work in here on the dirt de panier. As far as the clothes and stuff and the, the bags they were in, dude, they just, they charge so little to machine wash them for you. I'm like, okay, great, just do it. And since they air dry them, that means that any kind of remaining dirt won't get baked in. Okay. And then, <laughs> don't tell anyone, but I'm cooking up a scheme for how I can get the bike in there. That's graduate studies. That's 500 level. We'll see what I can do. Okay, that'll be a good video, by the way. Good spectacle. All right, bye for now. A couple of weeks later. Just see... Just so you know, I'm alive. So yeah, um, I've been here for like two weeks now for a number of reasons. Uh, I'll tell you about it. I've got movies about it, but I haven't even, I haven't even put them up. But uh, this has really, this place has been a real lifesaver. Like I, I came in here a mess. Turns out at like three or two or three different levels at once. Uh, physically, I had an injury, and mentally for some other stuff and for other. And, and logistically, I was a mess because I had left some stuff out on my little impromptu involuntary camping night and everything was filthy. And this place, the order of this place allowed me the chance to get all of these things back together again. And uh, once again, it helps me understand hotels. People have got enough, people got enough chaos, people got enough problems in their lives and just a place where things are safe, things work, nothing smells bad. Uh, and with all the right feng shui cues, you know, uh, that allows us to attack our other problems. Surely this applies in regular life and regular homes as well. 
Okay. Well, hey, setting off now. See you later.